Welcome to the Grace Writers Podcast, Christian writers changing popular culture. Connect with us at gracewriters.com. Welcome to the Grace Writers Podcast. This week we're talking about the important question, am I called to write? I'm Belinda Pollard. I started Grace Writers. I'm an author, speaker and blogger. And uh, I've been helping people write and publish books for over 20 years. You can find my books and links to my websites at belindapollard.com. Hi, I'm Danita Bundy. I'm a writer, a blogger, creative writing teacher, and I have a healthy addiction to photography. You can find out more about me and what I'm up to at danitabundy.com. Hi, I'm Alison Young. I live in South East Queensland. I write sweet romance and like Danita, I'm a little bit addicted to photography. You can find me on alisonjoywriter.com. Thank you, guys. So our topic today, am I called to write? It's, uh, it's a big question for Christian writers. I think it's an important question for us to ask. But I think it's, um, I think it's also important because it's one of those questions that can make us think we shouldn't be writing when perhaps we actually should. So I'm interested at looking at the reasons why calling is important and the reasons why it can sometimes be difficult to work out our calling. Danita, what are your thoughts about uh, those spiritual aspects of calling for a writer? To identify a calling, whatever that looks like uh, for each of us as individuals, I think is really critical because when you're called to do something and to partner with God in a, in a work, whatever that is, you know that you're not alone. You have the power of the Holy Spirit, you have the blessing of God and you've got the, that love and that team around you um, to keep you going, help you focus and I think realise and focus that you, it's, not your, it's not on your shoulders that God is covering that as well. Um, so I think that's definitely the positive of being called into a Christian work, whatever, whatever that is. Mm. And um, how can we tell if we are called? Good question. Simple think, question. <laughs> not a simple question. Um, we're all different uh, and God has this amazing um, ability to be unique and diverse as his creation is. And so each of us may feel that a bit differently. Uh, for example, my, my story is very different to both of yours, as you know. Um, I started getting dreams from God when I was about nine. And through my life, I tried to understand what that, they were about and I couldn't get help. And I went from both ends of the spectrum. I had a, a pastor try to exercise me saying that they were from uh, the devil. And I had a priest try and tell me that um, I was making things up because there was no such thing as the devil. So, and I had a lot of other reactions everywhere along that um, perspective, but I knew in my heart they were from God. But I just didn't know what to do with them. Um, then when I was about 44, I, I had been um, bouncing from pillar to post for jobs and careers, all of things which were really good to do. But when I got to 44, all my roads led to the option of writing. I had a, a real desire to write a story. And so I prayed to God about it and I felt him saying, use the dreams that I've given you. So I, the premise of my first book comes from one of those dreams the characters within those within that story are based on the dreams that I've had and one of my characters um, dreams and his story his dreams are recorded in the book and um, those are my dreams that I've had as well so I felt that I had something so despite the fact that I was not a writer I was not skilled or experienced in writing I have a mild disability in writing. I have um, mild dyslexia, so spelling is an absolute nightmare for me. Um, but I, I just had to get this story out. And I felt with those dreams, I had some material to write and that gave me confidence. So, um, yeah, for me, it was, it, it all fell into place. Even the higgledy-piggledy background of my jobs and the experiences and the travel and everything fell into place that 
this now was my time to write, even though I had no idea what writing was about. So yeah, that was, that was my call. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? We are very different. As you said, uh, I was, uh, I learned to read over my mother's shoulder when she was reading me stories with all the voices. Uh, when I was a small child, I was reading the newspaper before I went to school, which led to some awkward conversations for my poor parents because there are things in the newspaper that you don't really want a five-year-old to be reading. And uh, I, um, I was voracious in consuming uh, the written word uh, picking everything off the off the shelves that my that my older siblings had been reading for school, also things that possibly not all that appropriate for uh, a six or seven year old child to be reading. Uh, but I never, uh, and I always enjoyed writing. But I never actually knew. I I think I probably wouldn't have had the temerity to think that that meant I could be a writer because being a writer was this sort of um, lofty ideal that uh, I wasn't sure. I, I thought that might be a little bit too um, presumptuous of me to be thinking that I could be a writer. So uh, I always enjoyed the written word. I ended up with a job. In, I did a degree and a job in journalism. And that was a good thing for a, a writerly type of person to do and make a living. But I always had this. And then I ended up uh, studying theology and I started writing um, uh, Bible devotionals uh, and uh, these types of things, uh, partly for a living and partly as a ministry. And I always had this little uh, undercurrent where I really wanted to write fiction. I really wanted to write fiction. And I had a vision for writing um, mainstream fiction that would have these little hints of the kingdom that might help turn people towards uh, make people think differently about Jesus, about Christians, about Christianity, about hope. And I wanted to do them. And the number of places that I went and the number of people that I talked to, wanting them to give me permission to do this writing. So I would talk to them about it. They would not get what I was talking about and it would fall over yet again. So mm. actually part of the reason that I started Grace Writers because, was because of the number of problems and setbacks and things that I had over my over my life as a writer and the number of times that I felt that I probably wasn't allowed to do this thing uh, to finally be released and to be doing it and to be encouraging other people to do it is extremely exciting to me but um, testing you know whether you've got that calling did you uh, did you have any but did people encourage you in it Danita I, I was just listening to what you said there and I thought um, I had mixed response. I had um, friends say, yeah, you should do something because I had been writing small stories using my photography and poetry for my nephews and children of my friends. But when I went to a professional writer, uh, she basically told me, no, I didn't have what it took. I didn't have material and I should perhaps not stop my day job. Um, so at, I, I think going and getting testing... Um, is good and something we are challenged to do. But I think it's important to not put the call of a person over the top of the call of God. Um, so even though someone might be very experienced, they are not necessarily um, coming from it the same way that if on your heart you know that God has called you to write, um, like me, with no skills or experience, um, write something then who is who is someone to say don't do it and like you've said before belinda the ability to self-publish um and for me in particular with the struggles that i had knowing i was called helped me reach out to a wider community so having a good editor having a proofreader um, i've started a writing group where we live out here so there's support of other writers it's just because I felt called to do it doesn't mean that I'm on my own, um, that I, it's important that I reach out and be part of a community and get the help that I need so that I can do the best I can with the call I feel I've been given to the story I'd like to share. Yeah. So it, I think that's another thing about being um, the value of being or identifying a call is you're not on your own spiritually with God, but also it empowers you to reach out and get more help, I think. 
uh, from the community around you or building a community around you to support you. Mm. Mm. What's your experience been with calling, Alison? Um, well, I'm, I'm different again. Um, I've always been interested in writing. When I was little, I was always making up stories. And I'd, when I was older, I'd read a book or I'd see a movie and I'm going, oh, gee, I'd like to write something like that or I'd like to do that. Probably didn't get the support. I was probably too shy or didn't think I was good enough to bother sharing anything I'd written. Um, I did the usual teenager, teenage, female teenager, poetry writing. And I actually did, I remember one exam I did at high school, I actually topped the grade for the English story that we had to do, which I was quite surprised at. But then it sort of seemed to be a one, one hit wonder type of thing. So I was always interested in writing and doing stuff that's just probably giving myself permission to actually do it, to actually step out and see where it goes. And I, as you know, it was only a couple of years ago that I actually decided, well, if not now, when? Mm -hmm. So And just say, okay, well, we'll give it a, my best shot and see how I go. And, you know, having someone like Belinda take a look at the script and go, Ah, yeah, you actually might be a writer there. You've got some potential. So, you know, that's a bit of encouragement. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a lime green editor in the sense that I, uh, I don't always follow the, uh, I don't follow the rules of what some people set down in terms of what constitutes a book and a writer, because uh, some people will look at it and, uh, and I'm not talking about your work, um, Alison, but some people will, I've had this happen to some of my writers, people will look at it and say, this is hopeless because the person doesn't know how to say, punctuate dialogue which is one of those esoteric things and so unimportant because A, you can learn to do it and B, your editor can do it for you even if you don't learn to do it. And, mm -hmm. and so I've had people who, who told, who were fabulous storytellers telling these stories that just glowed with light and love and possibility and people were shutting them down and saying, oh, well, you're not a writer because you can't spell. I think, hello? No, they're fabulous storytellers. So, um, you know, we can fix the other stuff, but we can't, we can't inject, we can't take someone with perfect grammar and inject storytelling ability into them. Uh, but the storyteller is this innate thing that needs to be um, nourished and brought forth and encouraged. Um, Alison, you had a few um, practical ideas, I think, that you had hunted out for us in terms of discovering, like either discovering our, whether it's our calling or even um, testing the calling or if we're not sure of the calling, what to do in the meantime. Yeah, well, I think if you have people other than your, maybe your mum and your best friend telling you that... Um, they're challenged by your reading or they, they like what you're reading other than being supportive and feeling like they have to, they have to tell you. Um, I think we were having a discussion about this earlier, Belinda, but I always sort of had to write in some form. I've always can't get away from writing, whether it's even just writing in my head. Um, I'm always writing, can't get away from it. Haven't physically, like I physically had to, put it aside, but there's always been the writing there. I've always had a diary. I've always done stuff, been interested in writing and, and reading, obviously, go hand in hand. Um, I think, I don't know, if you, if you can, people, if you get professional advice, you've got to obviously take that with a grain of salt going on beneath his experience and... <laughs> You know, if you get some encouragement from a from somebody in the industry that says, "Hey, well, you've you've got potential," then it gives you a bit of encouragement to maybe keep going. If you're interested in writing and you're interested in learning how the process works, or you're interested in doing classes, or just interested in improving for yourself, there's um, what else? Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you hear from God. And it's obvious that it's from God. Sometimes you, like people, I've seen that people 
from their life experience, they would never, never write a book. And then or something happens in their life and God sort of taps them on the shoulder and goes, hey, you need to write a book. Or someone will say, hey, you need to write a book about your experience because it will help others. So I guess that's another another thing. And I think if it's, if it's something you would do, even if you couldn't earn a living out of it, like it's just something you something you enjoy, something that you want to do. It's just those sorts of things that go, okay, well, you, you've got a bit more, how can I put it? It's just that interest there that something you would pursue regardless, maybe. I think, um, and I, I would add a little bit to that as well because uh, – from two angles. One is that sometimes there might be times in your life. I know I've had times in my life where I didn't read as much as I would like and I didn't write as much as I would like because of things that were happening in my life. So if I can encourage you out there listening, that if you are going through a phase where it is hard to write or it is hard to read, don't assume that means you're not a writer. It's, it might just be a, a period of time that you're going through and you might need to heal from whatever it is that's happening and it might yeah. come back to you later yeah. and that is fine. And the other thing that I would add from having uh, been helping writers for over 20 years, one of the things that I've seen, and a lot of us, a lot of us are a little bit um, unsure. We're like, oh, I can't really claim to be a writer. I can't claim to be called. I, we're, we shy about it. We pull back where we hesitate to claim and walk into that calling. But one of the things that I would say that I have seen is that if you have this, this deep desire to write that's down there um, in your heart and it, the yearning persists over years and years, even though there's the ups and downs and the times that you do and don't write, my mm -hmm. experience is that that yearning is not a mistake. This is from observing writers over many years. Uh, if the yearning is there, there's a reasonable chance that the yearning is a calling. So, um, yeah, just keep persevering, keep writing, keep moving forward into it. Often momentum builds confidence and clarity about calling. So just keep writing, keep connecting. And that's one of the things that Grace Writers is for. Come to our monthly Zoom catch up and chat with other writers. You will be very welcome. It's a, it's a relaxed and friendly atmosphere. Come to our online community where you can ask questions uh, and suggest things to other people. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity to grow as a writer and to test that calling and to grow in confidence. Because once you've got the confidence of the calling, as Denise has said, um, you, you do keep pushing forward because, uh, and on the blog last week, we talked about what is success for a Christian writer and we measure success differently. So um, it's not necessarily selling millions of books. <laughs> It might be something much smaller and quieter that God has for us, but it's still a true calling. Did either of you have anything more that you'd like to add? I was just um, interested we'll have because we we're having a discussion about this the other day, and Danita, you were mentioning about Moses and and the calling that he had that he oh. didn't know he wasn't going to know that it was his calling until he'd arrived. That's right. Yeah, in Exodus like chapter. Yeah, he um he didn't want to he didn't want to step forward. He didn't want to go out and do what God was calling him because um, it was overwhelming. He would have to go back and, and confront Pharaoh and free all his people who I did not identify with him. And God says, "Trust me, um, I'm doing this work through you, and you will know when you stand on the other side on Mount Sinai, and I give you the law. You will know that I have called you." So he had to step out in faith and trust that God had called him and the answer and the assurance would come after the event. So I think that's for us as well, test it. Um, and what do you got to lose if, if you have a yearning to write and you have a story to tell, even if you're journaling or poetry or whatever it is, if you're writing for family or for friends or for yourself, 
what's it going to hurt if you pursue it and practice it and test it? Um, so I think if, if there's any, any challenge at all, give it a go and find other people because you're not alone. There is a world of writers out there who are just loving the, the world of writing. Mm. I, I think that one of the th sorry one of the things that I um that helped me was uh oh can I possibly spend all of this time writing a book and then I thought well how many other things do I do in a week that are also not fabulously worthwhile like sitting in front of the television for example could I dedicate at least some of that wasted time sitting in front of the television to writing my book mm. it freed mm. me and helped me sorry Alison I interrupted you no, you're fine. Um, I just think you just do the best you can. You write, you do whatever you can and then leave the rest with God. I mean, the thing is, if we're writing and we're worried about, as we're talking about, about success, how we're going to measure it, then none of us would ever get started. No. I think you've just got to leave it up to God and, you know, everything's in God's hands. So... You just yes. put it out, do the best that you can at the time. Yes. And I think one of the benefits of um, testing that, if, if you feel or the, if there's an inkling that you have a calling, it kind of lifts, it, in one sense, there's a bit of a responsibility to follow through with that calling. But in the other sense, if we know that God is with us and God is working through us and we're relying on God, it enables us to have a lot more joy in it. Mm -hmm. um, we can enjoy it. We don't... Sometimes we might struggle over things and it might be, um, you know, isn't always easy or pleasant, but underneath it, um, the bottom line is there is joy in writing. And I think if you find that joy in whatever process of writing, then that too might be a marker that it, it's the calling. So I think it frees us up to just let go of all of that and just enjoy the art of writing. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> Let's enjoy our writing. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, everyone, please visit gracewriters.com and go to the podcast tab if you have any questions and give us your suggestions for what you'd like us to discuss in future podcasts. We'd also love to have you join us in our free online discussion community. Uh, and to meet with other Grace Writers in our monthly catch-up on Zoom. Simply subscribe to the blog to receive your invitation to the community and the catch-up. We don't make those links public to help keep um, interference out of our community and our meetings, which has been happening to some online get-togethers. I'll just uh, quickly pray for us as Grace Writers uh, before we finish up the podcast for this week. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you have given us, each of us, particular gifts and a particular calling and that you are not judging us by how successful we are in the world's terms and that you love to see us delight in you and delight in the gifts that you have given us. I pray for each person listening that you will help them and encourage them and show them uh, what it is that you have for them to do and exactly how you have gifted them and the opportunities that you are creating and opening up before them. Help them to walk into the calling that you have for them to be released, encouraged, lifted and carried. And we entrust them to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus and in the power of his blood. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, Danita. And we'll Thanks. see you next time on the Grace Writers Podcast. Thank you for joining us today at the Grace Writers Podcast, Christian writers changing popular culture. Connect with us at gracewriters.com. We'd love to see you there. Thank you.